professional setup. <laughs> oh. Ready? Three, two. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome, welcome back, back to, to the, the Chanel. Chanel. So we thought we do. We've had a couple questions talking about you know. Can you do some a video on relationship advice, things like that? Boys. Not that we're the best to give out this advice. <laughs> nope. Um, but we've had some questions, um, and we thought we'd start a little series. One, two, three, four, five questions. Don't know why it took me so long to count it like that. Five. Five. Um, we've got five questions, and we'll just talk about them. Obviously, if you've got any other questions that you want us to answer, pop them below. Or DM us. Or DM us, if yeah, if they're private. Yeah, of course. Um, so let's get started. We'll start with, okay. Best advice to get over a boy. Oh. It's difficult because everyone deals with it in different ways. It is very each to their own. Mm -hmm. um, I would say personally, it's just staying busy. Yeah. Um, like just staying distracted like let yourself feel the emotions mm -hmm. let yourself heal from it but don't sit and wallow in it yeah. because then you're just never gonna get past it you have to get yourself out there and just start living life again yeah for me i'm a wallower yeah. i wallow and i and she you, gets me I out don't. of it but i wallow i come and i pick up and i pick up the pieces i'd say being with your friends is the most important thing yeah. like always doing something if you feel the tiniest bit sad or anything just get, get out of the house yeah even if you do something like we do go and get a mcflurry yeah just even get out of the house things. even if you're doing it like on your own like you go for a walk go for a walk for 10 minutes just clear your head just get out of the house because yeah. i find especially late at night as well that's when it always gets you isn't it because that's normally when you're with the person so it's like just get get out do something yeah next this is a controversial one actually opinion on girl best friends so i'm assuming that this means if your partner has a girl best friend. has a girl best friend or a best friend of the opposite gender personally i think that your partner should be your girl best friend or your yeah. boy best friend by all means have friends of the opposite gender but i think if you're Classing them as your best friend. Your girl, your girlfriend should be your best friend. At least yeah. I would want to be the best friend of my partner. Yeah. If it's like a family friend that they've been friends with for years, and like they're like really close, that's absolutely fine. Like personally, I don't mind that. Yeah. But if they're saying, or if they're introducing, like this is my girlfriend, this is my best friend. It's like, it's like no, no, I'm both of those. Because then you mean. both know, you know that if you ever have a problem in your relationship, they're gonna go to them and be yeah. like, this is what, this is what's happening. This is the da, da da da. Personally, I think there's sh there's boundary. There should be there's boundaries. There's definitely boundaries, even with like your boyfriend having boyfriends. There's like, boundaries. There's still boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It just happens to be that it's the opposite gender. Yeah, I think. Personally, I would want to be my partner's best friend. Yeah, me too. I'd want them to be like, if someone asked, oh, who's your like girl best friend? You, they would go, my girlfriend. Or if they just said, who's your best friend in general? You'd want them to say. Yeah. I think They're that's what friend. it should be. Yeah. But. Next one. How to tell a girl you like them, even if you don't think they like you back. Just go for it. <laughs> the worst thing that they can do is say, say no. no. And if they say no, you just go, okay, cool. Like, I saw something on TikTok the other day, like a, not a motto, maybe a motto, like a life quote. And it was like something about, I'd rather go through life saying, oops, than like, what if? Yeah. Like, I'd rather say, oops, it didn't work. Because they could turn around and they could be like, oh my God, I've been waiting for you, you to say this, yeah. I've liked you for ages. I've been too shy to say. Yeah, and then it all works out perfectly. Or the other end of the spectrum, they could turn around and say, look, I'm really sorry, I'm not feeling the same. You go, okay, completely respect that. What is this banging? That's them builders. Stupid builders. We're trying to film here. Stop fucking banging. <laughs> There's a topless man outside. Oh. <laughs> that was not a nice look. Um, did not need to see that, thank you very much. Excuse me. <laughs> Can you stop fucking banging? <laughs> Tips on being more confident when trying to approach a boy. So I'm guessing this means that if you like a boy and you Be yourself. Feel, yeah. Don't try and be someone that you're not. Mm -hmm. Because I've, I think we've probably both been there, where you try and change yourself to be what they, they want. Mm -hmm. But then you're not yourself and you can't be 
like we're both quite silly, quite fun. Like, <laughs> actually gonna scream at him in a minute. Hopefully it's not too loud on the camera, but I have a feeling it's gonna be. Excuse me, sir. Thanks. Be yourself. Just be yourself. And if they don't like you for you, you don't want to be with them. And in terms of trying to be more confident, fucking fake it till you make it. You actually will learn to be more confident in yeah from faking it heard that boys like it when the girl goes up to them um so they're probably no matter what you say no matter what you do they're going to be taken back anyway because you have got oh, 100 percent. like my last relationship i went up to him first and we were together for what like a year mm -hmm. and that's because i made the first move yeah but they will appreciate it because it's not considered it's not normal. normal so anything is going to get you somewhere Opinions on your ex going for your friends after you break up. Okay, one, if your friends go anywhere near your ex-boyfriend after you friends. break up, they're not friends. So if that does happen, you know that they weren't your friends in the first place. Secondly, if your ex goes for your friends, you know that the whole time they were with you, they, they were, were looking at them. Yeah. They were interested. So it shows that there is absolutely zero respect there at all. On both sides yeah you've just got to learn to deal with that and you need to realize they're not your friends and you were not meant to be with this person at all 100 percent. that's just a big no it's a big disrespectful thing and again they're not your friends if they go for your ex no i i am going to show it them now. <laughs> no i'm too scared <laughs> people talk a lot about red flags but we know. can do both. We can yeah. do green and red. I think like green. Personal green and red flags. I yeah, think. I think everyone's green flags different because everyone wants different things. Hundred percent. Everyone's looking for different things in life. Red flags for me is not getting along with my family. That's a massive thing yeah. for me. Not being a family man. Mm -hmm. Like I'm such a family oriented, oriented person. Yeah. Like my family is my lifeline like i could not imagine doing life without them yeah so for somebody to come into my life and They've either not close. have that with their own family which i know is hard sometimes and i'm not saying like everybody's got to have a perfect yeah, 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 their yeah. family but if they're not at least trying yeah what's the point do you yeah. know what i mean and if they can't come into my family and my family's like well they're standoffish no uh i think green flags <sighs> family man <laughs> family man yeah put it in effort yeah. somebody that actually is willing to come and see you willing to pick you up and drives pick you up and um spend time with you people that aren't afraid to tell their friends about you yeah like that they're, they're not ashamed of you like mm -hmm. they're they're happy for you to be around them is um somebody that just sort of not takes control mm -hmm. but like they'll say okay be ready for this time we're going yeah. we're do, be ready at seven i'm taking you out and just somebody that like thinks of like little things and for for me my love language is very much like little like acts of kindness yeah um so it's things like even if somebody remembers my favorite chocolate and they're yeah. like oh i got you this because it reminded me of you or i yeah. got you this because i know you like it that to me would mean the absolute world yeah because they remember things about me that are small but it means a lot yeah or it could even be like somebody organizing a date night you have to learn to love yourself yeah. and if somebody else can't love you the way that you need that need that love like i personally struggle with, boy, yeah. i personally struggle with like obviously you guys know like i'm autistic i've got issues around mental health yeah and somebody that needs that i need them to be there everyone has them. different boxes that they 100%. need ticked as long as you feel like they are ticking most of your boxes or enough or enough <laughs> maximum no minimum four minimum four Very depends minimum. how many boxes you have right depends what boxes say if you have well. 20 boxes that you want ticked oh minimum as long 10. As, yeah as long as they're ticking 10 that's absolutely fine they need to tick at least half yeah if you can say it's, to them i need you to do this little bit more for me or i need you to just tone it down a little bit yeah then in an actual like sorry, how, sorry. In a, a healthy relationship and a relationship that what is gonna work they'll be understanding of that and they'll be like oh okay let me change that for the next time and they'll it's a learning curve it's not oh i'm angry at you because you're doing this wrong it shouldn't cause an argument if it causes an argument 
it's not the right relationship sorry the camera cut out because we've been filming and waffling on for so long but yeah i think that's all the advice we can give you for those specific questions um we're going to make this into a series because we do uh, we have got quite a lot of questions about you know like how we deal with teen i say teen life of 20 now so how you you survive in your 20s like or how like we that. survived our teens we're going to come up with a name for the series, which I mean... Well, you'll see, because the title of the video will yeah. include that. So if you've got any questions about, like, we're two young girls who are going through our, our 20s for the first time. Hopefully some of you are too. So if you have any questions, we've got quite a few, so... And if you want to DM us um, any, like, scenarios, like, um, my boyfriend did this, what would you do? Yeah. Or this happened to me like what's your advice on it yeah like please feel free like it'll all be confidential obviously like we're not going to name any names yeah. and we um, can even get like my mum in it yeah if we need to to get a different kind of different perspective yeah and mum advice always helps always doesn't it yeah. so i think sometimes it just helps to hear it from someone else that isn't complete yeah. obviously you guys are not complete strangers to us like we feel completely comfortable to talk about anything on here in front of you but sometimes it is easier when you're hearing it from someone who does not know your situation at all yeah. is completely blind to it's it sometimes like, it's just easier there's no bias mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely so let us know leave anything in the comments obviously you can always dm us or anything on instagram yeah. because all that's more private um yeah hope you enjoyed hope you enjoyed and we'll probably see you in the next part of this